Hey guys, I just figured since it's getting close to the end of the year and there isn't really anything new that's coming out, I feel like the best stuff, like music wise, that has come out uh, as far as rock and metal goes has already come out. Um, I have a stack of CDs and cassettes of my favorite releases of the year 2021. Now I felt like this was a really good year for music as a whole since it was the return of um, this year saw the return of like live music and festivals and concerts people going back to concerts since COVID so I feel like music as as a whole made a revive this year and this year did have a lot of good music and I'm gonna get into my top 10 favorite releases this is EPs and LPs for the year 2021 number 10 is Fortitude by Gojira. Felt like this was a pretty really like this was a good album. Um, honestly, I like the one before it better, but I don't think Gojira's ever put out a bad album. Uh, this is just a continuation of everything that else that they put out. Uh, felt like it was a pretty stellar release, uh, and they were really good when I saw them live. So worthy of being on my list. Number nine is Colostum by Slaughter to Prevail. Felt like this was a pretty unique combination of like new metal mixed in with death metal mixed in with death core. Uh, I felt like this was probably the closest thing I've heard to Iowa by Slipknot since Iowa by Slipknot. Um, all in all, pretty stellar release. I know they're from Russia. I uh, can't wait to see them tour here in the U.S. again. Sucks I missed them when they toured in the U.S. in 2019. I wish they, I wish I went to that. Now since COVID and everything, and they can't tour over here right now. But anyways, number nine. Next up is number seven on my list. It's Absevere by Signs of the Swarm. And it's weird, this looks like a DVD, but it's actually their CD, just in a DVD pack, like a DVD case. But anyways, music wise, this was probably their best work, in my honest opinion, um, at least since CJ left. Um, this song, this well this album had like, just banger after banger after banger, just heavy song, after heavy song, after heavy song, it was no chill with this album. It was just really, really good from start to finish. Um, but yeah, number six, or no, number seven. This is number six. Number six is Violence Unimagined by Cannibal Corpse. Um, I actually pre-ordered this, really looking forward to it. Um, yeah. It's, this was probably their best album since a skeletal, dom uh, skeletal domain for me personally. This was just very thrashy, very brutal, very heavy, very dark sounding. Uh, you can tell they were mad in this and it was actually really, really good. Uh, definitely recommend listening to this if you haven't yet. And every time, I live in Florida, so every time I go to the Orpheum, especially when I see like death metal bands, like both times I've been to the Orpheum to see Dying Fetus, Corpse Grinder was there hanging out, and I got a picture with him, uh, not this past time this year, but back in 2017. Anyways, just thought I'd share that information. He's a pretty cool guy. Normally you can find him at like either the merch table or the bar there, and he's normally drunk. Anyways, where am I? Number five. All right, this is number five. This is Lorna Shore's new EP, and I return to nothingness. Um, some of you guys may be wondering why this ain't higher up on the list because there's just so much more stuff that I personally like more, and because this is only three songs. Um, but the three songs were really, really good. So. 
definitely looking forward to hearing more from these guys with the new lineup with um, Will Ramos since CJ left. Um, I feel like their lineup has fully evolved into just epicness, and I can't wait to hear more from them. Um, next up on the list is Knock Loose, A Tear in the Fabric of Life. This is their newest EP that came out this year. Um, it is just six tracks of just pure heaviness. Um, definitely different vibe from these guys since the, um, I don't know the name, the name of the, uh, Love Songs, yeah, I think it's Love Songs, the one with the dog on it, and then, uh, Laugh Tracks, um, and then they kind of changed their sound with a different shade of blue, and then this came out, and it's just, like, a different shade of blue, but even darker sounding than that, um, man, why am I going to focus? Anyways, here it goes. Oh, no. But I think this is definitely worthy on the on the top ten list. You guys should go check it out. Alright, this is number four. Um, Unto Other Strength. The reason why I have a, a sticker there. Um, this album just makes me feel like I'm in like this never-ending metropolis with no sun on top of it and it's like I'm driving or no I could be riding through it with this horse into a never-ending metropolis with no sun um very well produced I think uh the production on this is just absolutely stellar I think with them signing to Roadrunner it's just gotten they've just gotten even better uh, Mana and Don't Waste Your Time are really good, but this is definitely um, them at their peak. And I own the cassette version. It's got the silver cassette. It's really pretty. Let me put it in the light. But yeah. Alright, we're getting on to the top three. Top three is... Beartooth. Below by Beartooth. Um, where do I even begin with this album? I really like the production with this album. Um, I like the fuzz effect that they put on the guitars for this album. Definitely gives it like a classic rock type feel. Um, the songwriting on this was excellent. Um... Instrumentation was excellent. Production was excellent. It was just a very, very good album. Um, but I've never really known them to put out anything bad. So Number two is Lifeblood by Brain of Sacrifice. Um, this is like some next level deathcore. Um... Uh, hands down one of the best albums I've not only have I ever heard but heard this year um, when I saw these guys live um, they were very very good definitely recommend picking up a shirt or if you want to go see them when they tour with Chelsea Grin go see them uh, pick up a shirt listen to the performance hang out with some of the band members at the merch table just get to know them they're really good guys um, yeah, number two on the list. Alright, and top ten, or the number one top pick for me personally. Kind of wish they got nominated for a Grammy. That list just came out, and they're not on it. But they were considered. And for damn good reason, Spirit Box. Eternal Blue by Spirit Box. If you're a fan of, like, Jen... Um, this is definitely a prime example of what Jen should sound like. Um, I feel like this album, with well, with Courtney's uh, lyrics and just the and vocals and the instrumentation, definitely put out um, 
some of the best gin I've ever heard. Um, really good debut album. Definitely looking forward to hearing more of their uh, next material. And hopefully one day I can be able to see them in concert because my plans to see them next year got kind of ruined. So uh, looking forward to seeing them in the future. But this is my top 10 list of the year 2021. Things I'm looking forward to next year is more concerts. Slipknot's possible new album coming out. Uh, the Disciple Tour with Obituary and Gate Creeper. That's coming up. That's in January. But yeah, um, this is everything. You guys have a good night. See you next year.